we cry when we pray. <laughs> and at times we are not apologetic when we pray, when we cry. We are not apologetic. That is our strength. <laughs> I'm Mary Ngugi. I'm born again. And I thank God that it has been a journey walking with my God. It has been a journey and a beautiful journey. People walk different journeys in life, isn't it? And there are others in the midst of walking in this journey, they get tired, they get despaired, and they look back and turn back. But I've never looked back. I press on. This morning, I will start by saying that I will say thank you. Last Sunday, I wasn't with you. I went to visit our father who was unwell. He's still in hospital, but through your prayers, God has done him well. May God bless you for those prayers. As we are beginning Tabitha week this week, we want to look through the story of Tabitha, but in a different way. We want to look at Tabitha in a different way. Tabitha was a woman, and I thank our sister Salome for the prayers. She left a mark in her day. But when she was alive, nobody noticed Tabitha. It is only the widows who knew Tabitha was. But during her death, the whole town of Joppa knew that there was a woman who made a difference in people's lives. One as if we were. So today we are not going to talk about that because we'll still repeat that same message on Sunday. But today, in preparation for Tabitha Week, I want to encourage each one of us to have a heart, just like my sister Salome said, the heart of Christ. The heart of Christ gives. The heart of Christ has compassion. When we carry that heart and minister in our society and in our lives, a mark will be left. Today, we want to read through a story of a man called Cornelius. Cornelius is in the book of Acts, chapter 10, from verse 1. Cornelius is in the book of Acts, chapter 10, from verse 1. I'll read through and try and read it fast so that we can go together. I will read as I go explaining. At Caesarea, some people call it Caesarea, there was a man called Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day, at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of the Lord who came to him and said, Cornelius, Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man known Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel spoke to him, had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon, the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heavens open and something like a large sheet bring, uh, being let down on earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of the earth and the birds of the air. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord. Peter replied, I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times. Immediately, the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. 
They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, um, I'm the one you are looking for. Uh, why have you come? The men replied, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jews. And the holy angel told him to, sorry, a holy angel told him to have you come to his house so that he would hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be with his guests. Bwana Sifiwe. It is a long story. We will not go, but I'll keep explaining. So today, we are looking at a man called Cornelius. Cornelius, I said he lived in Caesarea. Caesarea is border, okay, it is far away from Israel. It's slightly far. And one of the disciples of Jesus Christ called Philip had gone to minister in Caesarea. Philip had three daught four daughters, and some of them were prophetesses. You remember Philip, who one time preached to the Ethiopian eunuch, and as he was going, preaching, the Ethiopian eunuch asked him, now that you've told me about the Messiah, is there anything that would hinder me from being baptized? And immediately there was a pool, and the eunuch was, bap was baptized, and then the Bible says Philip was carried in spirit and taken elsewhere. Can we remember the story? So Philip is the one who preached the message in Caesarea. Here we are meeting Cornelius living in Caesarea. So Cornelius is a Roman centurion, and the Bible says he was in the Italian cohort. A cohort is a group of soldiers, a hundred of them, who have been put together, and there is one, a centurion, who oversees them. Are we together? And it depends. They can be a thousand. We have academic cohort, people who do the same degree, and then they graduate together. So we are not talking about academic cohort. We are talking about an Italian cohort, men who are under a soldier called Cornelius. So Cornelius, in short, he's a soldier. Are we together? We have soldiers in our areas. Do we make friends with soldiers? Just come to think about it. Do we make friends with soldiers? Actually, we fear them. Slightly, we fear them, isn't it? So here, we are dealing with a soldier today. Cornelius is a what? A soldier. And not just a normal soldier, he is a centurion. You remember the centurion who was with Jesus Christ? He told Jesus, you don't have to come here. In fact, just send a word, and my servant will be? In fact, he told him, I'm a man under authority. I just say, go. I say, come. That is a centurion, a man of authority. So today, we are talking about a different centurion called Cornelius. Cornelius was, should have been a very tough man. But there I want to ask, why do you think they had the Romans under, I mean, uh, with, uh, with soldiers all over Israel? You see, in Israel, there were four or many religious groups. There were the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and we had another lot called Zealots. Zealots were people who, who were Israelites, who formed political alignment, and every time they would be against the Romans because they were feeling, why are Romans oppressing us? They were like, uh, what do you call them? Vijana Wamita. You get those tough people who say this is our territory, do not come here. So zealots were people in Israel, and every time they were against the Roman authority, the zealots. So, there should have been, or the, the Roman Empire stationed soldiers all over with many centurions to oversee their administration so that people do not revolt against them. Are we together? So now you can understand why 
Cornelius is a centurion with a hundred men under him because any time people can start going against the laws of the Romans. In fact, there was one disciple of Jesus Christ called Simon the Zealot. We read about him. So we're understanding why there is a cohort. Are we together? So this man, Cornelius, was not just a normal soldier. He was not just a normal centurion. There are some four attributes or five attributes about Cornelius that I want us to study today. Number one, the Bible says that Cornelius was a man of influence. How do we get he's a man of influence? The Bible says that he and his household feared God. Are we together? You are such a great man, a soldier, but you have trained all your household to fear God. That is Cornelius. And not just that fearing God, another thing about Cornelius, he was a devout man. Who is a devout person? Somebody who is pious, somebody who is religious, somebody who knows the values that you hold, whether it is Christianity or Islam, you have seen the Muslims, the way they are very devout to their wash, to their prayers. Have you ever seen them pray? Even at odd hours. In fact, if it is at three, even if he was driving a truck, he will get down, take his mat, and kneel and pray. You've seen them. Very devout people. Last Sunday when I was in Kijabe, I saw a woman who is a Muslim. Just when people are waiting and it was three, she was there praying. And she really challenged me. I said, wow, this is so beautiful. At three, she was there just praying, rising up, kneeling, going down, because she was devout. That was Cornelius, a very devout person. But Cornelius, remember, he is not an Israelite. Cornelius is a Gentile. And you see, Gentiles had very many gods, very many. As I was going, doing research this week, I discovered that there were as many gods as there was emotions. If you are very excited, there is a god of? God of? If you're very sad, there is a god of? If you're overwhelmed, there is a god of? But this man, Cornelius, was not devout to those gods. In fact, when Peter, Paul was preaching in the town of Athens, if you remember in the book of Acts 17, he passed through the city of Athens and he found those people. No, the, the Bible says the people of Athens were idolaters, and they really wanted a lot of arguments. You know, these people who are philosophers and they really want to argue. In fact, they say this man, he's been busy babbling here. Call him so that he can tell us what he's talking about. And when Paul started preaching the gospel. He told them, I have walked in your town and I've discovered you have a temple written to an unknown God. So those people had very many gods and even some unknown. Are we together? Very many gods. Some are even unknown. So Cornelius would have served those gods, but he chose to worship the true God. One as if he were the God, of, the God of Israelites. I don't know if it is Philip who had influenced him to know that there is a God in heaven. And so he chose and he was devout. How do we know he's devout? The Bible says he prayed three times. The Israelites also, like Muslims, pray three times. They would pray at three, three, no, nine o'clock, at noon, and at three. And we see that even through Peter, Peter, the Bible says that he was praying at three, and then the angel of the Lord visited him. Are we together? So Cornelius, a zealous man, a devout man, was also praying at three. And the Bible also tells us that he gave alms. He gave to the poor. You know, there are some things that make somebody different. Cornelius gave alms. And who was he giving alms to? He was giving to everybody. And because he was giving alms to everybody, it looks like he must have been a, well, a wealthy man. As I was doing research, I discovered that centurions were paid five times more salary than the other soldiers. Are we together? So he could have used his money anyhow, but Cornelius chose to help the needy with the increment of his salary. And Cornelius feared God. Cornelius feared God. He held God in awe. 
He revered God. He respected God and honored his commandments. No wonder when he discovered that the Israelites give alms, he said, I'm also going to give alms. When he discovered that the Israelites pray three times, he also dedicated his hour into prayer. Are we together? That is a man who fears God. And you know, when you're giving to the poor, I, I, I think uh, Cornelius might have known the book of, is it Deuteronomy or Leviticus? Leviticus 15, 11 says that there will always be some poor in the land. That is why I'm commanding you to help the needy. You read the book of Leviticus 15, God explains about the poor. And I want to tell you today, is there an estate in our country where we lack a poor person? No. In all our estates, isn't it? Even when you walk through Mudaiga, somehow in a corner, you will find a small slum or somebody who is living in the servants' quarters. Are we together? So God leaves some in our midst who are poor so that God will command us, not request us, command us to help the poor. Are we together? So Cornelius knew that. And so Cornelius gave out his arms to God. And when he was praying, you know, when you're giving, you touch the heart of God. There's something that happens, even if you're not a Christian. When you give your arms and when you pray, God in heaven hears. And that's what happened to Cornelius. In fact, when the angel came to him, he told him, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have been memorial to what? To God in heaven. Are we together? Just give. Just give and pray. The book of Malachi 3, 16 says that a book of remembrance from heaven was opened when people talked about God to each other. That's what the book of Malachi says. I think one of these days, our pastor Audio will expose to us the book of Malachi. It's very interesting. I read it. The people in the day of Malachi were very angry with God. In fact, they had six accusations about God. First of all, they told God, you don't love us. How can you love us? You don't. And that's why when you open the book of Malachi, it begins with, I love you. It's a love letter. Because these people felt neglected. Number two, they told God, we cannot even give you tithe. It is in vain we are serving you. By the way, the book of Malachi is very interesting. So when you're closing the book of Malachi chapter 3, God says, now, I want to put a distinction between those who fear me and those who don't fear me. Because that was what was happening. Even today, there are some people who have given until they say, I will give no more. Actually, I'm tired. Every year, it's Tabitha. Every year, I've been giving out my clothes. But God is telling you today, a book of remembrance will be opened. And God is going to write your name on the book of remembrance. That's what he did in the day of Cornelius. Cornelius, the Bible says, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have been memorial. Things that we remember. I don't know what people remember you for. Is there anything that people can say, my sister there, we remember her for this. And it's good to give. Let me tell you, you don't lose when you give. By the way, when you're giving, you are an answered prayer to somebody elsewhere who had prayed. Are we together? When you give, you are an answered prayer to somebody who once prayed. And I, wa I don't want to go aside with my example, but at one time when I had finished school, I didn't have enough clothes. And I was given some employment. I only had three clothes. And I would work from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I needed how many clothes? And I had how many? I visited my aunt. And she gave me two more clothes. Was that not an answered prayer? And on Friday, because that was the last dress I was wearing, and it was in January, she had given me a pull neck. And I wondered, how can I wear a pull neck? So in the night, I told God, if it pleases you, God, it is January. Please let it be very cold so that when I wear my pull neck, 
I will be relevant and true. That morning, it was very chilly. God answered my prayers. I wore my pool neck and I seemed fashionable. But God remembered me. She was an answer. When I'm telling you, please, let's give. Let's give. Let's give. You may be used of God to answer somebody's prayer who only have three clothes and need two more just to go to work. And among the things my aunt gave me, she gave me a cardigan. And that was the only cardigan I owned that time. And it rained. And that time would dry our clothes with fire. You know Maui? And I took a small, uh, this, what do you call it? Easy stools in Yonakakwa Moto. And I placed my cardigan there. And it got burnt. And that was the only cardigan I had. And the next day, it rained. I put on my cardigan, but I wore it the other way around. I was teaching, and a, a girl came and told me, teacher, you have worn your sweater the wrong side. <laughs> I told God, let the sun shine so that I remove this. I didn't have any other banners, if you will. When you're giving your clothes, please, it is an answered prayer. Somebody is going naked. And that was the only cardigan I had. Banners, if you will. My aunt clothed me, and I was ready to teach. When I'm appealing to you, please give us clothes. Like Saturday, I was here yesterday. I only have two bags of clothes. I don't know whom I'm going to give them to. They are very few. I cannot give them. It is cold. It is chilly. I have nothing to give. We don't have anything to give. And in your house, imagine you have clothes, very many. How do you know you have very many clothes? When you go to your wardrobe and you want to remove one, others are falling. Do you know what they are telling you? We have not been worn for a long time. One as if you will. Please, if you see a dress that has dropped in your wardrobe, just look at it and ask it, where do you belong? Because for sure you don't belong here. Where do you belong? Tell me where you belong. One as if you will. When I think about clothes, I always give out. I always give out. I always give out. I tell my children, let any bring. And some of them, uh, we had just bought... And they still have the tag, Nimpia, because he only wore one term. The next term he came when he was taller. What do you do to that one? You have to give out. God wanted you to give, not an old one, a new one. One as if you were. When you see that you've given your child a cloth, na imekuwa ndogo, please, mungu anasema hiyo, inatakana yende kwa muradi. You people, do you know we have a CPC project here? And how many, have you ever come here on Saturday and seen those children look at their shoes? I always see nakedness because I was once naked. I always see their shoes. They are in torn shoes, those boys, those small girls. And we have shoe racks, shoe racks. Not with one pair of shoe, but very many. Please, today, by the way, I'm not going to go home. I will remain here because I don't have shoes to give out. Imagine I don't have. I'm only appealing to you. Please bring me shoes. One day, we have had Tabitha week all along, but we have never called the children of CPC and given them a heap of clothes to choose from. We will stand judged. Why did God bring them in AIC? My sister said, who knows why you are in this position at a time like this? And you have clothes. And these are our children in CPC. We always, I thank our treasurer. He calls for money. We become mentors. But have we fed, have we dressed the CPC children? Let's be honest. Have we, fed, have we dressed them? So today, imagine I will be here. I will just wait at the gazebo until you bring me piles and piles of clothes to give to our children. Piles and piles of clothes to give to young boys. 
Do you know they really lack a lot? They talk about boy child and people probably don't get to know. We don't have clothes to give boys. Even the inner, the inner wears for boys, please bring them. Please bring them to me. I will give them to our boys. Are we together? And even to our girls, please bring to us. Where were we? Cornelius. That was just by the way. The book of remembrance was brought. And, memo and Cornelius was told, this is a memorial. Are we together? On the other hand, we have Peter on the other side. Peter is praying. And what is happening when he's praying? A sheet is brought, isn't it? A sheet from heaven with food. He's told, take one and eat. Kill one. And what did Peter say? I don't. Why did God tell the children of Israel not to eat some food? It is because God wanted separation. The reason why God tells you don't, he wants to set you aside. So Peter, like all the other Israelites, and like you and me, God has set us aside. Don't. Don't do this. Don't do this. Because he wants to put a distinction between you and others. So when God has put a distinction, he's told you don't, then God comes and tells you, now do it. You will just be like Peter, wondering, if I don't do this, now why, why are you telling me to do this? Are we together? So Peter was brought a sheet. You know a sheet? To me, I looked at it as a menu. When I do a menu, and this man was hungry. Are you remembering he was hungry? And you know when people are hungry, they can really be impatient. But Peter chose to go and pray. If you visit somebody and you discover they are still cooking, please, go and, go and, are we together? When people are, you know he was in Simon Tanner's house, that was not his house. And the people are preparing food at noon and he was hungry. So what did he do? He went to the upper room to pray. When you visit somebody and discover they've not cooked, please just go and pray. You know when you are praying, a vision will come. One as if you were, like it did in the day of Cornelius. And you see from the, from the, from the sheet, there were all kinds of animals. But those are the animals which Peter said they are unclean. They are those ones which, which fingers? The Mexicanas. You know what the Bible says? Don't eat those ones. You know, from a menu, you can be able to know the people in that area. Have you ever gone to a menu and it is written crocodiles, reptiles, frogs? Can you get it in Kenya? But in China, you can get such. Are we together? Are we together? The menu shows the kind of people. You go and see Mursik. Do you know where that menu is? You see Modokoi. Do you know what that menu is? You see Mokimo. Do you know where that menu is? Are we together? From the menu, you can know the people. So Peter was brought a menu that is not like him. Are we together? You can be hungry if the food that is in that hotel, you are not used to. So that was the, the fate of Peter. But today we are not talking about the menu. We are talking at that distinction of, I don't eat this. So God was using the hunger of Peter to show him that today, I want you to do what you don't do. Go to the house of a Gentile called Cornelius and preach the message of salvation. Because when you go reading ahead, that was that. Are we together? So today, as women, we are going forth. And we are going for Tabitha week. We are going to places where you don't get used to seeing us there. I don't know if God gives us a burden to go to a bar where we shall go and give men suits there because we are expecting to have some suits today. Are we together? You've seen people in bars. Do they wear suits? In fact, I, I looked at a clip of one person, a pastor, when he went to a bar preaching at around nine, when they saw him, they said, oh, pastor, you have come. Somebody was tempted to tell pastor, ape wengapi? Are we together? We might go as we are preaching the message of Tabitha and mercy to places. So when you see us there, know that 
we are doing what we normally don't do, we might go even to places like, like, that are brothels. When you enter, and you know there are some estates you just enter and people know your business there. There are many Rahabs in that estate. Please, when you see us go to Rahab's houses, know that we are breaking the norms. Are we together? So that we can reach. That's what you want to do, ladies. Because God is telling us, go even into places where you're not used to going. Are we together? That's what I want to do. Please give us enough clothes so that we can go to funny places. Even like a, a, an estate down here in Joro Girls, where we will get people brewing. Let's go and give them something. That's why the sheet was brought and Peter was told, eat, kill and eat because God wants to set us free. So what am I saying here? That today, God wants to use even men. We have contributed as women. Are we together? And thank you so much women because you've given us. But do we have Cornelius in the house? Do we have Cornelius in the house? Do we have our brothers in the house? Have they given us something for Tabitha? They have not. They have not. Because I've not seen suits. I've not seen ties. I've not seen those good shirts. We want to take them to Konza. Are we together? So that when we dress them and they come here in AIC, they will say, Tulipewa na wamama wa AIC. And because we invited them to come to church, they will not say, Hatukuwa na nguo ndio maana hatukukuja. Are we together? So please, our brothers, our Cornelius, I will not leave. Together with our women here, we shall be waiting for suits. We shall be waiting for good pairs of shoes so that we can go out and preach. We can go out and preach the message of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 58 says that the greatest, the good, true religion is sharing your food with the hungry. Job also said that in the book of Job 31, that if I did not, if I ever saw a widow and an orphan and I did not clothe them, God judge me. That's what Job said. Read the book of Job 31. He begins by saying, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look at a woman lustfully. Then among the things he says that if I did not clothe the poor, God judge me. Today we do not want to be judged, but we want to be blessed. Are we together? Shall you send us with blessings, our Cornelius? Will you send us with financial aid as we go for Tabitha? So please, we will be waiting at the gazebo. And we want you to be part of our team, even those ones that are watching us online. If God blesses you and you want to be part of this ministry, just send and write Tabitha. We shall reach out because we have a Cornelius whose prayers are being answered because he gave his money to the poor. And when he prayed, the message of salvation reached him in his house. The Bible says there are some men whose prayers are not answered because women are a hindrance. We are not holding your prayers. We are lifting you up high and saying, God bless our brothers so that together we will receive the blessings of Tabitha. Father, in Jesus' name, that is our prayer today. We desire to go out and preach. Send us with your love. Send us with your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you so much.